Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Sean here and today we're going to do a quick video going over some of the new features in React Router 6.4 and we're going to have a little bit of conversation about um, you know using React Router 6.4 um, in a plain old uh, React app as opposed to the creators of Remix who created React Router and using Remix platform and kind of weighing the benefits of using one of the frameworks or another. I think this is going to be a really good talk and I really, really look forward to seeing you guys' feedback on this. Um, so let's go ahead and let's get into it. All right, so today we're going to go over some of the new features and we're just going to take a browse at the docs and we're going to just discuss some of the features, kind of what they do and, um, you know, just have a conversation basically because right now we can use the new 6.4 version in a straight up plain old React application, which is really cool because what that does is gives us the same types of features that we use in Remix. But here's the difference. If you use Remix, you don't get nested routing. You don't get the app server basis that you get with Remix. And that's why I've come to the conclusion that for the startup project, um, which you may or may not know about, but um, I've got a startup application. It's a real tech startup um, that I'm building from scratch. I'm going to be documenting it on this YouTube channel. Um, and it's basically a, a YouTube management tool um, for building YouTube videos and becoming a YouTube influencer and it was really inspired by a lot of things um, I heard from Sean Canal, Gary Vayner, um, all these other creators on there and, and I figured a, a really cool way to combine all their knowledge into an application uh, that lets people manage and use those best practices. Now that's my startup idea, it's out of the box now I guess, um, but nonetheless um, I've been beating my head against the wall trying to decide whether I just want to do this in plain React. Do I want to use Next.js because they've got, you know, the choice of using server-side routes and client-side routes and then the, the mixed hybrid between both of those or Remix where I can use their new functionality to have everything in the browser handled. Um, and, you know, that's what I just made my decision is that I'm actually going to go with Remix because if now that we can use the same functionality in React Router with just plain old React, then that tells me that you know this is the way things are going. We're trying to get back to the web API standards and using the stuff that's already provided for us with some extra functionality behind it to do the things that we need to do in our applications. So let's go ahead and let's get in here and let's start talking about 6.4 React Router. So first of all, we're gonna talk about the different routers. The new routers they have are Create, browser router, create memory router, and create hash router. Now, the browser router is, you know, similar to the ones we have before, except we're able to call loaders and actions through them. Um, I'm not going to go into these. Um, what I really want to get into is uh, the different routes um, and then the components that are new as well. So let's go down here to the routes real quick. Click on route. Um, and routes um, are the new setup for routes using the loaders and actions. Now, if you're not familiar with Remix, um, I highly suggest you just go over to their website, uh, do one of their tutorials. Um, they got this jokes app that's really cool and just build it and, and you'll see that you're gonna use these loaders um, to load your data and you can handle them with form requests through actions um, and you can parse information back and forth between databases and, you know, get that single page application fill um, with minimal code, really. It's, it's freaking awesome. I, I really love it. Um, but with the route, um, it's probably the most important part is what they say here. And um, it's to load data, get data mutations through route nesting. Um, so with this route, um, I don't know, I haven't done it yet. We might be able to use this property here to actually set up nested routing in React. Um, I think that would be a good video to see if we can actually do that because if we can mimic what they're doing in Remix, then um, with React, then we could kind of you know go off on our own and we wouldn't have to download one of their frameworks and we could just use React, spin it up on Vite, and boom. Uh, that's another thing. Vite, if you're not using Vite and you're still using Create React, React app, 
you're crazy, man. You go to Veet. It's much faster, more efficient, and way less stuff going on behind the scenes than with Create React app. Uh, but either way, um, the actions. Um, this one is really cool because the route action, it writes to the router loader, um, which we'll talk about the loader here in a minute. And it provides a way for the apps to perform data mutations um, using the simple HTTP and HTML you know, APIs from the browser. Um, so this is a really cool functionality. And we're, the way they've designed this is we're using a lot of the browser's fetch capabilities with the async await. Um, and we're able to call our action to get whatever data it is we need. And then we can use the loader to parse that data, whether it's to the screen or to a database. Um, and that brings us over here to the loader. Um, now, it's important. They say that this feature only works if using the data router. So picking the data router, we need to use one of these data routers in order for any of this functionality to work. Now, the error element, this is you know for fallback and for, for catching errors. If you've taken the remix, one of the remix tutorials or if you've done a remix project, they've probably went over how to catch errors. And this is really awesome. Um, actually, um, for my day job, um, I'm actually going through the entire app and pointing out where all the errors and warnings and successes can be. And uh, this is something that uh, we're talking about possibly using if we upgrade our router for the current project. Um, but nonetheless, um, this should revalidate. I haven't got a hold of this one yet and used mm -hmm. this one. Um, it says this feature is only working if using the data router, which we've already established, mm -hmm. um, after an action is called from a form, from a fetcher form, from a use submit. Um, so from use state, um, after an action is called from mm -hmm. a fetcher uh, or UL, a URL params or a search param. Uh, if you define the should revalidate on a route, it'll first check the function before calling the route loader for the new data. So we get some validation help with this. Now, if the function returns false, then the loader will not be called and the existing data for that loader will persist on the page. So this is really cool too. So we get some validation with this new functionality. Um, other than that, they've got these new components such as the await component, which is really cool, um, which is used to render the deferred values with automatic error handling uh, to make sure that uh, you get the review to the deferred data guide, which I guess I can click on that real quick and see what that is. Uh, the deferred data guide kind of outlines some of the problems that they, they're trying to handle and uh, how they're using the new 6.4 version to handle these and what the solution is. I'm not gonna read all this stuff, I'll let you do that, but basically it goes back to the browser API using defer and um, you know, basic fetch params. So we finally get to the new component, the newest one that is directly used in Remix as well, which is this form component. Uh, and then this is really cool. Uh, and the idea behind it, um, especially if you've watched any of the Remix singles that the Remix guys got going on, which shout out to you guys, those are really awesome. Um, they help out a, a, a lot. Is we're able to handle all of our data within a form call, whereas before we need use effects to update the state, we need post calls, um, you know, we'd have to have state all over the place to handle uh, pulling our data in, setting our data um, on the screen and parsing it back into the database or, or into, you know, memory or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and this form handles it all. So we can take a button in a form and wrap the data that we want to mutate and handle um, within these objects. So I don't have to use a use callback um, for a button anymore. I don't have to use on click or none of this stuff. We can just simply write it the way that the web intended it to be wrote in the HTML documentation on Mozilla. And we get that functionality right out of the box and behind the scenes, um, which we're gonna do a video because I'm gonna like pick these apart and kind of see what they're doing with this form um, in another video. Uh, but you'll see the logic behind there and you'll see what they wrote and they've got some pretty complex stuff using a lot of different closures and um, different kinds of, you know, um, data patterns that they use to handle all of this stuff for us through these new components. So you can think of it like this. They've written us some brand new components, um, just like any other component, like an input or, you know, uh, a date time picker or something like that. 
and they've given us some new components they've given us some new utilities for those components that way we can handle data in a different way which is a lot more simpler a lot less code and a lot more faster uh, and intuitive because you know we're able to do things with data through these functions uh, that are congruent and uh, very very fast and very cool um, so I will leave the link to this new React router out here. I just wanted to make a quick video to kind of update you guys and let you guys know um, if you know what you might be missing out on because you don't have to just you know do a remix project to get that functionality. We can now do it in React, which is really cool. So um, I also want to give out a shout to Maximilian Schwartzmiller. Um, he's got a really really cool video um, where he actually takes you through a project and shows you you know with a, a regular project of a blog post with the use effects and all the different state wired up and shows you we, how we can get rid of all that by implementing this with the new version 6.4 I'll leave that link below in the description and I highly recommend checking him out he's one of my favorite creators um, on YouTube and on Udemy and I've learned a lot from that guy over the years so um, check him out and don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to my channel for more videos like this more discussions don't forget to leave your comments um, about what you think uh, you're gonna go with react with just the new react router or are you gonna dedicate yourself to remix um, I'm still trying to debate that one now because I'm so familiar with React, but I think that if I don't do Remix, then I'm gonna fall into a lot of the old paradigms of the way I've been coding for years in React, so I wanna try to catch up with the new paradigms and start using this stuff more effectively. I think Remix has got a better handle on that, um, and I think that's probably the way I'm gonna go. Uh, but either way, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the links below and let me know your thoughts. Talk to you later.